What, what would you say you do here? Well, look, I already told you. I deal with the goddamn customers so the engineers don't have to. I have people skills. I am good at dealing with people. Can't you understand it? What the hell is wrong with you people? Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. And not that long ago, we got the news Bloody Monday, as <laughs> I call it. Uh, you know, all the layoffs with DC Editorial. A few days have passed, obviously. Almost a week has passed. Well, a lot of information has come out. A lot of people are being quiet right now. Perch and I are going to get to the bottom of it here today. And obviously with me to, to talk about this is the Poobah Comics himself, Perch from Comics by Perch. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Well, I'm glad you could make it. I do want to say this. If you're you're joining us today, but you haven't subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell for notifications. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy this update about the DC Comics layoffs. Give us enormous thumbs down if you think we're a couple of rubes and we got it all wrong. But definitely, either way, give us some feedback in the in the comment section. We love hearing from you. Also, if you enjoy Perch's uh, stylings here, but you haven't subscribed to his channel, there is a link in the video description. And there's also going to be an opportunity for you to subscribe to the channel at the end of the video. And I highly suggest that if you haven't taken the leap over the comments by Perch. Well, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, this is a story that keeps evolving and, and uh, we seem to learn new things every day. Absolutely. We're going to get to those. But the first thing I got to address are all the hot takes. There are so many hot takes and I think a lot of it is wishful thinking. And in, in truth be told, some of this is somewhat true, but it's it's the SJWs aren't being driven out of DC Comics because of their uh, social media behavior or because they're SJWs or because they are woke. This all started when AT&T acquired Time Warner a couple of years ago. They were doing an evaluation. When you, when you heard the head of AT&T that was responsible for the transition, he said lots of things about redundancies and there's going to be synergy and, and you know, we're doing an evaluation. Obviously, the pandemic kind of uh, halted or probably pushed this back a little bit, but it wasn't like DC was gutted. Warner Media was gutted. They did 800 total layoffs. 175 of those are, are like HBO, which is a much bigger platform than DC Comics. Yes, it did trickle down to DC Comics. They were told to, you know, cut, uh, clear some of the fat, clean the decks of some of the people that were loyal to Dan Didio in the past, and, you know, and start. Uh, with a new future moving forward. But did Andy Corey Lewis's job because of his uh, attitude and, and stuff on social media? Possibly. When they said you have to lose three editors, who who can you lose? They probably were like, well, Andy Curry is kind of a headache. But, yeah. but for the most part, the people that were let go were let go because either loyal to Dan Didio or they were deemed very replaceable. I think that this goes to, I, I, and people seem to struggle with this, uh, of kind of what I want internally versus what actually happens. And I know that there's been people frustrated with social media comments and, and all this kind of this, uh, the storytelling they don't like, the woke comics, not woke comics, whatever it happens to be. But this particular instance, it's it, 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 you don't need to attach too much to it. It's, it is straightforward. When AT&T acquired WarnerMedia and Time Warner and all these assets, they said at the time, more than a year ago, you covered it on this channel that there would be uh, there would be cuts. You know, there would be optimization, there would be synergy. This is what happens with literally every acquisition that happens. You always acquire. You do some looking. It does not happen the next day, like some people have said. Like I've heard the hot take of, well, if this was based on that acquisition, then they would have done it the day after they acquired. Why would they waste all the money? That, that's not how it works. Big corporations move slowly, and they they did assessment, they looked at what they had, and these changes were made. In many cases, they take somebody high off the top, and then a few months later, they take people underneath. And that also is what happened with Didio and now these other VPs and others that have been put down. Um, it is, it, it's, it, it, this is business, it's the oldest story in the book. And it, I think the other part of all this was, uh, people said, well, you know, if, if DC was listening to its fans, then it would have been, uh, it would have been saved. The, the problem with that is if you just do the math, in order for DC to, uh, let, let's say DC uh, tripled their sales and they, they made three times the amount that they made last year because they listened to fans and all the fans bought the books and it just blew up the sales and everything else. Even at that dollar amount, they would be way under 
where AT&T was going to protect that business unit. Business units that made a ton more money uh, had deeper cuts. It, it was it was not going to be saved that way. Now, I think the the one part of truth to all this is the DC that survives and is strong in the future and 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 lives on is going to be judged by how well it connects with its fans and how well it's able to put things into business. So I, I think that people are just getting onto this a little bit too early. These cuts were based on an acquisition, and keep in mind, several of the people being cut made potentially, probably quite a bit of money off that acquisition. Their options were purchased. Their stock was probably cleared out. That's what usually happens in an acquisition. A lot of the people who left probably had a pretty big payout at the acquisition, probably had another big payout of severance. So I'm not saying, you know, hey, it's too bad. It, it, don't worry about them losing their job. It's always sad when somebody loses their job. But these things are disconnected. And I think the DC of the future is the one we need to pay attention to in terms of are they listening to fans? Are they connecting with their product? That's going to be the one that matters most. But make no mistake about it. DC is suddenly not the, the number five comic company. I saw somebody's take saying, you know, the number one company in comics is now Marvel. And the number two company in comics is Comicsgate. That, that's Comicsgate is not a company. And DC has not lost its footing. They're still producing comics, still producing money. Boom, Valiant, all these other companies would love to have DC's revenue right now, even with all these changes. And that's just, is there still opportunity for people to do more? Absolutely. But, you know, let's not let's not go crazy. It is unfortunate when you have to admit, you know, we, we both love comic books, but essentially DC Comics is like a pimple on the ass of AT&T Comics. It's, it could be a, a nuisance or something, but it's really, it's not that big a deal. It's, it's so small potatoes. It is. And and some have said, and, and correctly so, okay, well, if it's so small potatoes, then that means AT&T could cut it tomorrow. It wouldn't matter. Yeah, it, it, there's some truth to that. Um, but DC as a brand, I mean, their, their licensed properties, everything else still makes them a lot of money. And the upside of getting a comic, even if you produce one hot selling comic that can be spun in, like, like we're seeing, frankly, with Punchline right now, Punchline the character and the merchandise and stuff around that is probably going to make AT&T, WarnerMedia way more money than that comic ever would. And it's worth having 10 dud comics out there for one hit, like Punchline. At the, at the dollars that it costs to produce a comic like that, um, it's it's just the safest IP trolling that you can imagine. And and so that's, that's why the game is played. Now, does that mean it's not going to be tough for some of the people internally? Does it mean DC might... Uh, license out more things or are they, more changes could come. All these things can be true. But for those predicting that DC is going to stop publishing all comics by January of 2021, that's, that's just ludicrous. And, and uh, I mean, there's just, there's just no evidence that that could ever be the case. So let's get into some of the facts that we do know. We, we got a few facts and we got some rumors to go along with this. We now know that the people that were let go or at least a good portion of them will actually be working for two to three months while they wait for their uh, their notice to be over. So they're going to be working in a job knowing that they're no longer going to be part of DC Comics within the very near future. Got to yeah. be a tough position to be in. It is, and that usually has to go along with some additional pay, and um, you know the severance kind of usually depends on it. Uh, that's that's often the the hook that companies do of like, hey, we need you for another sixty days. Um, if you come in and you don't like sabotage the company, you, you give a good faith effort to, to work out well, then we'll provide you with some human resource uh, resources to maybe get your LinkedIn up to date and, and help you out a little bit with your career and give you a severance. Um, if you if you spur you out and, and you know immediately jump ship, then you don't get any of those things. And so I, I, that's that's most likely the, the package that's been done. I know that's what AT&T did for direct TV employees back when that acquisition took place uh, like 10 years ago. So most likely that's what we're looking at. We'll see. You know, it's, a, it's probably a good deal for them. They give you a little bit of time. You make some money. You're not on your ass immediately and you can get your resume out there and maybe line up something new. Yeah. If, if they are continuing the career services part of their job, I know this is probably boring to 99% of your listeners, but uh, for a lot of people in comics, having somebody come in and help them with their career and uh, get their LinkedIn and maybe their resume up to date and get some kind of stuff professionally tied up. Hopefully that is what AT&T is offering because I think a lot of people in this business can use that. <laughs> Absolutely. So another thing we, we know, like there was a lot of leaks. The word bloodbath was spread around a lot. So I, I kind of figured it was one source. It, it sounds like a lot of people were using that word. I imagine they must have used it like uh, on like uh, some type of 
I don't know, Slack or like pr private DM group where they were just saying bloodbath and they all started spilling that to the media. But there's not like a gag order out there. DC and, and Time Warner and, and at and were not happy with all the leaks, with everyone giving out so much information. A lot of it uh, correct, but some of it not so correct. So they, they have got a gag order, so expect less leaks in the near future. Yeah, which I think that at and probably was surprised a little bit. Um, again, AT we've been through this before. So, you know, less than a decade ago, at and purchased DirecTV. They tried to integrate it into their business. About a year, there were some layoffs after that. These pieces all happened there uh, with that company. And they're, most, most people treat it very professionally. Uh, the bloodbath comment, I think, came from one individual um, who then everybody copied and started using. I think it's, it really started with one person. But it, it is, uh, I think AT&T was probably a little bit surprised at how the actions rolled out. If you look at some of the news from other parts of Warner Media, the other divisions that were hit, and frankly hit a lot harder, you did not see the same kind of trending chaos that you did for DC. If you were looking at it from the outside, you would kind of almost make the assumption or, or make the analysis that that DC was hit hardest of all these different units. But the reality is it was, it was hit almost least uh, of the different units. It was, it was generally spared, but the noise it created was far more than I think any other division. And I suspect that probably took AT&T by surprise. They didn't realize that this was gonna be the behavior. And frankly- Ah, uh, you're working with artists now. Yeah, exactly. Nerds. Exactly. It's, <laughs> it's that weird combination. I mean, they saw you know, a lot of their, their uh, media projects and other things, game projects, you did not see the same kind of reaction. So uh, if anything, by the way, in this whole story makes me worried about DC's future, it's actually that. It's that... that if Unprofessional AT response to adversity. Exactly. I, I think if at and is going to worry about a business unit, you know, big corporations do not like to worry about business units. They, that is not, they, they do not like noise coming in from that direction. They do not like having to put in gag orders and have HR get involved. And this is, they don't like the embarrassment of it. And uh, the fact that the comics line created so much noise. Um, and again, I mean, there were, there were groups that had 10x the layoffs and you didn't hear really a peep. It was, it was much more buttoned up. Um, that's that's probably going to raise my brows at AT and T, and and that gives me the most concern about what happens in the future. Comic creators are a sensitive folk. We do that. We <laughs> do know that. So, getting to some of the rumors that we hear, and these are from Bleeding Cool. I'll get to the first rumor. Uh, apparently, there's going to be a new general manager position uh, coming into effect in September. That's going to take up uh, take on a lot of the role that Bob Harris was doing as the editor in chief. Not sure who's going to do that. What do you think about a general manager of DC Comics? I mean, if you think about it in terms of serving up properties that other business units get to use, it, it makes sense as a role. And and probably a lot of our criticisms at times over Marvel and how they have they lack kind of synergy even within their own title lines and other things. Um, if you get somebody really competent who's, who's good at managing a product portfolio, good at managing uh, comics and kind of figuring out, you know, not having two events launch in the same month, you know, spread things out from a business. If that's the role they're looking for, then I think that would be a very good hire uh, for them to have. Man, I would love for for to be reading DC Comics and not have Batman on the other side of the galaxy, Batman in Gotham, which has been taken over by Bane, and then, you know, Batman in another comic book uh, taking on Two-Face. And the same in Gotham, but apparently that's not taken over by Bane. Oh, apparently simultaneously. Yeah, and and I would love that too. I, I now I doubt I, in my wildest dreams I'd love to see somebody come in and just manage continuity. I, I doubt the role would do that, but I do think what would happen is would you know if there's, if there's a Birds of Prey movie coming out, maybe get that comic and some of those graphic novels into some other shops like a month before the movie comes out and and reprint that's some of those classic stories that maybe led into the movie. That, yeah, exactly. Like, just just source materials. Take advantage of the situation. You know, that's that's what is really needed. The other big juicy rumor out there, and I can't believe I let, let this one to, to the end, but hopefully people stuck with us. They get to this one. There's a big rumor out there, and I got, I got to take the piss out of Rich Johnson here in a second, that the, <laughs> the creative talents of DC Comics that are that are like uh, exclusive talent are being evaluated and their status of the company being being kind of checked. But in there, he talks about the, the, the DC exclusive creators being Brian Michael Bendis, 
Dan Abnett, and Tom King. How the fuck is Dan Abnett an exclusive DC creator? He's writing Rye for Valiant. He's writing Deja Thoris for Dynamite. He just wrote some stories from Marvel. He's probably working with other publishers out there. How the fuck is he? In, is he is he exclusive? And I just didn't know it. I, I don't I don't understand that comment at all. I don't know <laughs> if he has some kind of other special deal and it's getting wrapped up into that, but uh, he does not. I, I mean, Bendis can't you know roll over and do a Marvel book without you know some express permission from DC. So maybe he has that deal and and uh, DC is just giving him permission to do all this outside work, which completely defeats the contract itself. And that would be very out of character for DC. But I. I have no idea. I read. I read that too, and I'm, I had an eyebrow go up. Yeah, just go over to Marvel and write for their big, their cosmic event that you had so much influence on and was a bestseller. Go now, write for competition. Yeah, it's it's totally fine. I, I mean, you know, you could argue maybe that if you're DC and you want to hurt Marvel, then deploying King and Bendis over there might be a good well, plan. But- Admin's <laughs> another. He's a quality writer. He's still, he's still got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I and, and I just pissed off all the uh, Bendis and, and King fans on your channel. But there you go. Listen, I've already done that <laughs> with my year and a half worth of my, my portfolio on YouTube. But so, yeah. should I be getting excited? Should my panties be in a bunch that Tom King and Brian Michael Bendis are going to be expelled from DC Comics like in one fell swoop? Um. I think there's some truth to that rumor. It um, could happen. I think there's some truth to that rumor. I, I now I don't. I, I think that I would say that. Well, that they're being evaluated. I, I agree that they're, they're probably now that they've laid off the editorial, they're moving over to the creative staff. They're going to be doing less comics. Who who's the keeper and who's a goner, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, and I, let's see. The best way to put this is, I think that that people should look at this like there's two things that happen. There's there's exclusive agreements. And those have a kind of a, a range that can happen. They're not as standard as you think. And then there's page rates and, and just what everybody else gets, just general work. And so taking away one doesn't necessarily take away the other. So if you are, say, exclusive with a company, you're getting some extra uh, salary and you're getting maybe some extra benefits and, and whatever you may have negotiated, you may have an office or whatever. Um, if that stuff goes away, it doesn't mean you're gone from the company. It means you still can choose to be there to write comics and 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 do your thing. But you're now like every other writer. You're you're page rate dependent, you know, and and so on. And so, but but for people who have really kind of built their uh, their total comp package, their their life around that concept, that's probably very very jarring. And in many cases, they won't want to put up with it. Some creators may have been saying, I, I you know I want to go write for Image or I want to do my own creative work. But it's worth it to me to work for this corporation because I've got this extra incentive, this extra money. If that money goes away, then the motivation for those creators to stay may go away. And on, on top of that, I think there's an embarrassment factor. Um, in some cases, you know, some of the names you mentioned um, have a reputation within the company of kind of flaunting their status of, of being like, you know, I'm, I'm exclusive, I'm bigger than you. And in some cases, treating you know their coworkers and and, and other editors and other thing very very poorly. Um, one of the names you mentioned has a very bad reputation for how they treat others around them. And so, if if that exclusive exclusivity goes away, uh, they're in a more precarious position. They might choose to leave on their own. Or frankly, if editors are now picking titles, it's like the chickens come home to roost. And now maybe some of the some of the editors, some of the managers are going to decide to just you know work with people who aren't assholes and. So I, I think that um, I'm, I'm choosing my words carefully because I, I think I know a bit about this that I, I can't talk about just yet, but I will do it first on your channel. Um, I think there's some truth to those rumors, and I think people should stay tuned. Absolutely. Well, that's exciting news. I did, you know, I uh, I saw the bleeding cool. I figure everyone's getting evaluated, but you never know. Things might actually be happening. I imagine some creators are going to have to go because they are trimming down the line. So you would imagine. They probably might have too many creators right now. So the last thing I want to talk about, we should have talked about it last time because it was already official then. Like DC collectibles is are, are being, it's gone. They're, they're not yeah. making their own collectibles in-house anymore. But this makes total sense. Like why did they ever do it to begin with? McFarland Toys is way better at making collectibles than DC. Yeah, and, and you've seen the relationship with McFarland Toys expand a little bit. You see McFarland's going to be part of the DC fan zone. Uh, I think... It does make sense to have that as an offshoot business. I mean, they've, they've created some work that I know people have loved and everything else, but I think they can still put those products out and they can do it with 
companies and people who are just more equipped. That's that is their core business. You know, DC collectibles was not DC's core business. And so doing it this way is um, is going to be smarter for them. They're going to save more money. It's it's just it makes sense on every front. And um, hopefully we'll still get the good quality you know, collectibles and materials out that people have come to love. But I, I wouldn't if I were if, if you're worried about this, I wouldn't be too concerned. Um, there's a number of different Warner Media properties kind of rolling in and, and they do have a you know, of all the companies. I, I think that they have a, a good reputation and how they license and how they get other companies involved. And and um, I, I, I think I think you'll be OK, but we'll see how it rolls out. Well, you're not talking to me. You're talking to Josh. He's the one that was freaking out about it. I was like, should probably cover this on the channel. I can't get DZ collectible. They'd be too expensive. I'm in the Philippines, but Josh <laughs> loves those things. They're going to be even better because they're all going to be McFarland or Mattel or something. Yeah, I, I think the odds are that we'll see a brief pause, and then I think potentially we'll get even better stuff out of it. I, I think that McFarland will do more. I think some of these other units will, will do more. And I think you'll see higher quality. And also, you know, frankly, you'll see some of these companies starting to compete with each other a little bit to make sure they're producing really high quality stuff that, you know, to, to keep those contracts, a, a contract with Warner media and those properties long-term is, is extremely valuable. So there's going to be companies really bending over backwards to, to, you know, to service it. Well, I can tell you this, Dark Knight's Death Metal is tailor-made for Todd McFarlane toys. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, no doubt about it. You can have a million Batman, um, and I'm sure you probably will. All right, Perch, I do appreciate you coming onto the channel and basically doing an update. There have been a lot of, there's been a million hot takes. Very few of them are just looking at the facts and, and what it is. Are some people gone that were glad that they're gone because they were a headache and they were bad for business? Absolutely. Are they gone because they're woke or they're SJWs or they listen to the fans? Not likely. It's gone because they're doing a major restructure at Warner Media. 800 people lost their jobs. Some of those people were DC and they had to cut select people to go. If it ended up being people that you didn't like, I guess you won out in the end, but it's probably not for the reason that you would like it to be. But we do know that people will still be working for a couple months. So maybe they can get their next job lined up. They have been given a gag order. We should have less leaks coming out there is going to be a new general manager position coming in september the creative talents are being evaluated and we might have news on that breaking on this channel in somewhat uh the, the near future and dc collectibles is dead but it's probably a good thing yeah yeah i think that's about right and keep in mind everybody if somebody leaves it, it doesn't have to be because of the exact reason you want them to leave just just take the win if you're glad they're if, if, if this person was annoying you just take the win that they're gone that's that's that works End result is the end result. I want to say thank you very much to Perch from Comics by Perch. If you have not subscribed to his channel, there should be an icon on the screen right now. I highly suggest you go click that, subscribe to the Comics by Perch, because that's your go-to source for, for comic book news and information besides thinking critical. I do two, two uh, videos a day, generally speaking, and he does three. Between us, you're going to get over one hour of comic book content, generally speaking, every single day.